Thanks for joining us with Buddy and Nancy. And in this particular video, we're going to listen to Nancy talk about how sometimes we say things, but our spouse doesn't hear us completely. And so let's listen. We were reflecting on the type of impact that you had on our marriage, and I'm not cry, trying to cry. I was about to cry. <laughs> it's already it's starting. Starting. <laughs> um, I got and tissues. The prayer that you prayed over us when we were here, like we could feel it. I and I remember walking away after you prayed over us, and it was just, I felt that I felt the Lord's presence in your prayer. Mm -hmm. And I knew God was working because we were already seeing that happen, but just like feeling his presence through the two of you was so impactful. How long have you been married? We celebrated 45 years. Yes. Wow. August 14. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations. And we, we had our first date the last day of 11th grade. So wow. actually we've been together um, since we were, I was 16, he was 17. That's when we wow. met. So we had our four and a half years while I got my degree, he was working on his. Then I went to work and saved all of my money at the hospital where I worked at the hospital so that we could get married. So we married his senior year in college. So 45 years. Wow. And it's all been easy, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> and I was going to say, so we still like each other, which yeah. to me, you know, some people think about being in love, but you have to really like each other. Yeah. I think that's a very important part of, of a relationship. And we still, we still like each other and enjoy each other's company. Yeah. We, we've been married about six months and she got a new hairstyle that she didn't oh, buddy, like. You can't tell and so she threw a hairbrush at me when I said it looked nice. And I said, where the heck we ever have to go? You know? right. <laughs> now, what he said with big eyes was, I never even knew you got mad. I never saw you get mad. The hairbrush did not hit him. No. <laughs> I, I was just very frustrated and with this new shag haircut I got that I had no idea what to do with. Yeah. And I'm in the bathroom trying to fix my hair. And he walks in and he said, what's the matter? I said, look at my hair. Just look at my hair. And he said, well, I think your hair looks nice. And I... And so, you probably really meant that. I did, I did, she's I like in a whole different world. And I can see how the confusion that she's like frustrated with her hair and he offers up a compliment. Mm -hmm. And then he gets a brush thrown at him. Mm -hmm. like I Six can, months into marriage. Like, right. It's like, his comment was, where did the heck we ever after go? <laughs> I wonder how many couples, you know, really go through that and experience the, what just happened here? <laughs> yeah, so in, in our marriage, I remember there's several times where I would just compliment you. You look great today. Mm -hmm. Your outfit looks great. Your body looks great. Something about you looks great. And I either would get no reply, mm -hmm. like none at all. Or you would say something derogatory about yourself back to me. Okay, so this brings up so much for me because, first of all, I I don't necessarily feel like this is what Nancy was saying in the interview. But for me, I was very self-conscious. I didn't have good self-esteem. And so when I heard a compliment, my inner voice immediately cut it down. Like, that's not true. Mm. He's only saying those things to make you feel better, which is the truth. Like in a marriage, you want to say things that build right. the other person up. But I saw it as a negative thing because of how it made me feel. It made me feel like it was accentuating the issues that were already there. So when you would say, you look so good in that dress, I felt fat in that dress. And I was trying to work through it, that it accentuated that and made me feel it even more. And yeah. obviously I brought all that on myself because of my lack of self-love. Yeah, I can see that. Now I can see that obviously, I don't think Nancy's referring to that either, but it is a great conversation to have because I do think that she had something going on with her hair at the time. She had a, I don't care for this, whatever the hair looked like, she did not care for it. And that is exactly what was going on for her in that moment is, I don't mm -hmm. like this. And then 
I'm imagining whatever Buddy had to say. If it well, did I like not, it. If it did not coincide with what she was going with to make her feel heard, then maybe it's not correct. Right. And, and I can see what yours is. Uh, you had something going on in the background about how you felt about yourself. Mm-hmm. That it really wouldn't matter who was giving you a compliment. No. It wouldn't if be If you, like, obviously, early on in our marriage, we had a lot of disconnection issues. But it, pretty much any compliment that you would give me, I did not hear it as a compliment. And a lot of times, it was like, does he really mean that? Because I didn't believe it about myself. Yeah. And that's where, like, self-love and individual work is so important in a marriage. Because what I was bringing to the marriage was all this baggage about how I didn't love myself. Me too. And projected it onto you. And so it got to the point where you didn't even want to really give me compliments no. anymore. Because I would tear them down anyways. And I would tell you how wrong you are about your compliment. And now in our marriage, 15 years, I can actually like soak that in. And I told you the other day, you made a comment about something. Maybe you're such a great mom or you were telling me in the bathroom and, and I felt myself automatically go into the, the, you're, you're not a good mom. If you were a good mom. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. I remember you saying that. And I was like, I'm just really in a place right now where I want to practice that, like just being receptive to a compliment and actually letting it soak in. I don't think for years I ever let compliments go past the surface to really impact me mm. because there was something wrong with the compliment. <laughs> yeah. i can tell you what comes up for me. Um, we can close on, on this is is the self-love uh, for years, for 40, probably 40 years, uh, I could not figure out why my relationships didn't work and why uh, my marriage was, was having such a hard time. And really what I got is Jesus says, what is the greatest commandment? It says, love God with all that you have and love others. And then the last one is as yourself. And that's the problem I had is I did not love myself. There was not that internal love of myself. And if I don't have that, I can't love others. Right. And that took me a while to, to get to that. And once again, I, uh, I don't think that Buddy and Nancy are referring to this. They're referring to something different. But it's a great uh, way to segue into how we relate to each other right. in a, a marriage. Yeah. And how sometimes things that are meant for good, we twist those things around and don't hear them, which goes back to sometimes we have to set the words that we're hearing aside and really listen oh, to, to the, the heart. heart. That's good. Yeah. Because if I would have listened to your heart, I would have known you really meant as a compliment. Thanks so much for joining us for this conversation and be sure to join us on the next one. Bye.